of Woody Nerdigans. This is the one and only Packer Girl 89 of Nerdigans Inc. And well, thanks to Capcom, localization discourse has hit the mainstream once again. But before I get into this story, we are at war with YouTube's algorithm and it is slowly but surely killing my channel. And in order to defeat this algorithmic beast, we need you to please hit that like, share and subscribe buttons. And because of course this channel, let alone this video are not sponsored. If you love what we're doing and want to help keep me my adorable Bubba K is somewhere around here and this operation literally alive and kicking so we could keep bringing you more anime manga and we might do more video game content if there's enough views on this video. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, whether it be for live reactions or news and analysis like this video and probably a rant like this video too, feel free to hit up our cash up and PayPal links are in the description box below. So, well, for I want to say the fourth time this year, thank Thanks to Capcom, localization discourse has hit the mainstream. The first time, I know it was near the end of the year, but it went into 2024, let's be real, was the Ancient Magus' Bride. Then it was um, the whole thing with Jello Apocalypse, uh, botching Lovely Complex's English job, which we did a video on, and I'll post a link to that in the uh, description box uh, below. Then there was the interview um, with uh, Crunchyroll President Perini, or I'm sorry, Crunchyroll COO Perini uh, with The Verge, who um, discussed uh, that Crunchyroll is going to be possibly experimenting with AI localizations. And now it's Capcom. And what we're going to do here is um, we're going to go through um, the thread that kicked th this round of discourse off. Um, we'll also go through a couple of other threads we found from Capcom's uh, localization Twitter. And then we will compare it to the anime and manga industry. Cause man, I'm telling you right now, video games, the video game industry in terms of localization is like a million times worse than what's happening in um, anime and manga. And it's very frustrating for me to see all this misinformation being spread. So we're going to debunk that today, finally. But anyways, let's get to what kicked this off here with this tweet from Capcom's localization team, uh, Twitter. Oh, God. What is localization? Embark on a global adventure through the lens of game localization. Uh, beyond mere translation, we're diving into the art of cultural adaptation, preserving context and inclusive storytelling. Join us as we unravel the intricacies that make uh, games resonate worldwide. Let's get here. Not just translating. Localization isn't about translating words. It kind of is, but okay. It's about um, uh, adapting the game for a global audience. I have to ask, what global audience are you talking about? Like, I understand for certain countries, they have to, um, you know, uh, um, work around them. Like with Australia, Australia has very, very, very strict uh, um uh, media laws and hell, I mean, look at like the Middle East, they have strict media laws. So I understand to an extent what they mean by this, but this right here frustrates me. Preserving the vibe is key jokes, um, references, and even gameplay elements that might need a little uh, cultural remix. It's the four kids, man. We'll get to what Caleb Cook said about this as well, because what he said in an interview uh, a couple years ago, it really makes sense. But let's keep going here. It's important to uh, find that sweet spot to make sure players get the intended experience without feeling like something got lost in the process. Now, here's the difference between like video games and anime versus manga localization. Manga localizations, you are able to put translation notes in the margins. It's a lot harder to do that for um, uh, anime and video game localizations. It, it is, but I just I had to point that out. So let's get the bridging to bridging the linguistic gap. Each language has, has its unique structure and cultural context. I wish it would just say fucking broadcast or media laws or something. Um, our teams that work to ensure the narrative and dialogue um, maintain coherence and emotional impact. It's not just about words. It's about capturing the essence of the story in a way that resonates with the target audience. No, this is the this is localizer fan fiction. That is what you're telling me is this is localizer fan fiction and you want to put cringe Reddit memes and Zoomer slang up in there. Viz does this. Viz will put use uh, uh, Zoomer slang and memes and all that. And Seven Seas definitely does it too. Those two are like the worst culprits of it. And we've been finding out that Square Enix has been doing it too, specifically with my dress up darling. But anyways, uh, cultural... 
Cultural sensitivity in characters, character design and development must be culturally sensitive. Again, I understand if we're talking about like specific countries, like with Australia or with uh, um, uh, like the Bill East laws or China's laws. I understand that. But like everything else, like especially when it comes to like the U.S., for example, no. No, 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 no. Um, what may be acceptable in one culture might be offensive in another. That's called art. Um, localizers play a crucial role in ensuring that characters are relatable and respectful, avoiding stereotypes or other references that could be perceived as negative in specific cultures. Motherfucker, you are just telling me this is localizer fan fiction you're doing. That's what Capcom is doing is localizer fan fiction. That's what this is. Um, Because in terms of like stereotypes or whatnot, look at look at Latin America, for example. They love Speedy Gonzalez, and Speedy Gonzalez is a stereotype, but they love him. Look, um, in terms of like uh, Japan, for example, in terms of cosplaying, they love it. They they don't see it as culturally appropriating. They see it as like a cultural appreciation kind of thing. They like it. So what they're doing is just counterintuitive. Now here's now let's get to this inclusive language and representation, which by the way, that's what happened with that um that wait, I think I turned my uh, childhood friend into a girl. Yeah, and guess what? The publisher and the manga cover not happy about it, but oh, we will get to that. We will get to um what's uh what Japan thinks or what uh, the process uh, from Japan to the localizer is because that's very, very important to understand. But let's keep going here. I'm gonna read these threads first and then we'll get into that. Um, let's see. Localization efforts and extend to promoting inclusivity through language and representation. This involves adapting not only the linguistic aspects, but also addressing gender specific language, cultural norms, um, cultural norms and di diverse perspectives. Transing a character is not a, um, well, it might be inclusive, uh, language of representation, but you are just, uh, Nine times out of 10, it's just, it's like grooming. Like Bridget's story in Guilty Gear, it's it's different. In Japan, he's still a guy. In the US, well, they call him trans, but if you look at his story, it's very much grooming. And you think trans people want to beat the grooming allegations, but uh, the aim is to um, create an immersive experience uh, where players from different backgrounds can identify with the characters and narrative. This is why I do manga live reactions because I identify with a lot of the characters I cover. I do, it's very therapeutic. And guess what? They're not botched localizations for the, mo well, for the most part. <laughs> um, when, it, uh, when botched localizations come in though and it's ruining one of my favorite characters, I will be pissed. But anyways, the aim is to create an immersive experience, as it says here, where uh, players from different backgrounds can identify with the characters and narrative. This can be very challenging for certain languages due to grammar. Adapting humor and wit. Humor often relies on cultural references and wordplay, making it a challenging aspect on, of game localization. I would say it's kind of like for localization in general, but um, translators must carefully navigate puns, jokes, and cultural references to maintain the intended comedic effect. Well, okay, so consistency in terminology. This is the final one, then we'll get to the next one. Um, maintaining consistency in terminology is crucial for a smooth and coherent gaming experience. High key, this applies not only um, to translating words, but also to ensure that game mechanics, instructions, and lore are uh, consistently represented across language, establishing a co- um, Cohesive language system helps uh, prevent confusion and enhances the overall game experience for players worldwide. Yeah, if if it's all if it's like straight up the same as the Japanese lore, then yeah, it works. Or Japanese uh, directions and whatnot. If if it's that, it works. If not, and there's like woke bull crap in there, then I will be extremely annoyed. And I know people are saying, "Oh, this is DEI, blah 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 blah." Hey, Kind of, maybe, maybe, but these are woke localizers, man. That's what you have here. Um, now, let's get into uh, 
Hold on a second. Let me make sure I have the right thread. Okay. Let's get into um, the next thread here, which is in regards to their localization process. And then we're going to discuss the, um, the role editors have to play because people are straight up blaming localizers when, and yeah, they should be held accountable, but, but editors need to be held accountable as well. And it does kind of explain in the case of Viz, which we'll get to um, with Kayla Cook, uh, Cook's interview, um, that uh, we got a four kids situation happening. But let's see. Here's the preparation stage. Um, did, did you know uh, game localization starts uh, early in development? As soon as the game project gets the green light, we're already discussing which languages to translate it into along with who and how it will be translated. It's all about planning ahead. In terms of game writing, whether it's in-house or external writers, um, there's a lot of back and forth with the uh, writers in the team. And things get even trickier when the contents slash materials need to be translated back and forth, adding extra layers of complexity. Um, in terms of the translation challenges, the translation process is never linear. Text, this is a huge problem because this is different than say like manga and anime where they get the script ahead of time. Um, and especially with manga, you have every page ready to go um, ahead of time, so to translate. So, like this is this is where it's kind of different because um, it says here, in terms of video game localization, is that the translation process is never linear. Text comes to us in chunks, sometimes lacking clear logic or context. At that point, I know localizers have said that they can't talk to um, the author in terms of manga, in terms of the author. But if you need help with contacts, like, uh, you know, in clarification, you might want to contact the Japanese branch to see what the hell is going on. Um, but anyways, uh, and oftentimes it's jumble, it's a jumbled mess that needs to be organized, sort of like untangling Christmas lights. And now here's the dialogue dilemma here. Speaking of um, tangled lines, uh, dialogue is constantly being uh, written and rewritten throughout development. Then, like, that's the thing here. You're telling me that um, it's com it's hard and all that, and then uh, because of lack of context, but you're fixing things throughout the development. Like, um, throughout development, that this makes tr um, translating it accurately a high-level quest. Uh, and I could say that. Um, Let's get to this part here. Uh, style and terminology. Every game series uh, has its unique style and terminology that must be respected. Yes. Phantom specific, or sorry, plant platform specific terms for buttons, controllers, etc. also come uh, with their own rule book. It's a lot to juggle. Like, I can understand this. Volume of text. Um, under uh, Underestimating the volume of game text is easy. Even small games uh, can have a daunting, daunting amount of text. It's like uncovering an iceberg. What you see on the surface is just a fraction of what's hidden beneath. Yeah, and sometimes it does get lost because localizers want to put their fan fiction in there or put a cringe Reddit meme or, um, uh, or Zoomer slang up in there. Let's see. And editing. Oh, we'll be getting to them editors in a second. After a translation comes editing. This is where our linguistic magicians, aka editors, come in. Not just uh, correcting grammar, but elevating the text quality all while staying true to the original style. It's a bouncing act of precision and creativity. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. I know where I'm. Now here's the technical details. Um, localization isn't about words. It's also about fitting them into the game's interface. Dealing with UI constraints can uh, be like trying to pack your uh, whole wardrobe into one suitcase. Uh, and then there's the script adapting and voice recording. Translating and adapting scripts for voice uh, recording is a meticulous and tedious process. And once recorded, there's no easy redo, making this process or making this stage both uh, critical and nerve wracking. Now this is where. I'm just like a huge what the fuck. This is where I would say it's different in gaming compared to say like anime or manga is this, the localization testing. Um, during uh, LQA, Linguistic Quality Assurance, testers comb through the game ensuring that all text um, uh, displays and all voice, uh, voices trigger as intended, basically ensuring that everything is perfect. This phase is like the final boss of uh, game localization. Yeah, um, so 
Oh, and we'll get to them editors in a second, but it's not just the localizers that um, that need to be held accountable. It's these mofos too, the linguistic quality assurance. Um, people need to be held accountable as well. Um, let me make sure I have the right thing here. Hold on. Okay, so this is the thread from um, Capcom's localization Twitter about editors. So here we go. Consistency is key. Editors um, ensure that a game's narrative, terminology, and style are consistent throughout the entire game. Imagine playing a game where a character's personality changes halfway through. Confusing, right? Editors keep it consistent. Yeah, in some cases, um, like... Uh, uh, Manga and anime local, well, especially manga localizations, we'll, we'll go over, not all of them, obviously, but a couple publishers definitely explain a lot here. Um, the editors uh, um, make sure, well, minus Jujutsu Kaisen where they didn't make it consistent, but yeah, I, I understand this. Now, the formatting finesse and uh, accuracy above all, ooh, this is very important. So formatting finesse here is games come with uh, text constraints and the editors expertly tweak uh, translations to fit into UI elements like menus and dialogue boxes, ensuring readability and, and clarity. Yeah, I can understand this. this. This is, I have no issue with. It's this though. Accuracy above all. Translating a game is more than just swapping words. Editors check for accuracy in cultural references, idioms, and humor, making sure they resonate with the target audience. Lost in translation, not on their watch. That is bullshit, and you know it, Capcom. That is a load of bullshit. Square Enix does it all the time. They do. Um, they, uh, the editors at Square Enix, video, uh, several Square Enix uh, video game localization teams, they need to be held accountable for the fuckery they do. Let's be real. Um, same with Nintendo of America. Nintendo of America needs to be held accountable. The editors need to be held accountable. The localizers need to be held accountable as well, to an extent. But yeah, there needs to be an audit or something. It's just insane with what's happening at Nintendo specifically. But let's get into this next part here. Um, more than um, uh, just the meaning, localizing a game isn't just about sticking to the script. Editors, ugh, editors add local flavor, mm -hmm, adapting jokes, puns, and cultural references to engage players in a more meaningful way. So you just basically admitted that um, that you're botching your localizations and it's mostly the editor's fault that are doing that. And we'll get to what Caleb Cook said because it definitely is consistent with uh, with what business editors are doing. Um, and my guess is 7Cs the editors are doing as well because we don't see this crap from like Kadansha or Kamiki or the Manga Plus exclusives or, um, or Magabo. Um, or Yen Press. I'm trying to think if there's another one that I'm missing. Yeah, we don't see it from them. No, we see it from Viz and we see it from uh, Seven Seeds. Oh, we definitely do. But it's just, oh, and Square Enix. Eh, Square Enix is very hit or miss with their localizations. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, let's see. I lost my spot for a second. Um, yeah, here we go. Collaboration is crucial. Editors work closely with translators and the rest of the uh, the development team. And it's got to be the American developing team. I'll explain why in a sec. Um, this collaboration ensures uh, that the localized version of the game uh, retains the original spirit while being accessible to a new audience. That is not, no. No, this is what I mean by like the four kidsing of Japanese media. This shit happens all when you say this, when you're saying a game retains the original spirit while being accessible to a new audience, you're either one for kidsing it, which I will get into um in regards to Boko no Hero Academia, or it's localizer uh fan fiction. We're looking at you that um, I, I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl. I'm looking at you specifically. Elevating experiences. Uh, just like um, a chef artfully garnishing um, a dish, editors add the final touch of uh, um, polish and flavor to get uh, to game text. Their meticulous work ensures that every word resonates with the player with players, enhancing the overall gaming feast. Well, let's get to let's get to what uh, Caleb Cook said and. For those of you that don't know 
who, who Caleb Cook is. Um, he has done uh, the localizations for a lot of his series, like Boko de Hero Academia, Vigilantes, Boko de Hero um, Academia Legals, Dr. Stone, um, and Dragon Ball Super, which ooh, Dragon Ball Super has been a hot mess. Thank God. Thank God for fan translations. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to cover Caleb Cook's interview. We're going to cover this stuff from Jello Apocalypse in regards to um, anime localizations. And then I'm going to definitely debunk the myth about um about ai translations or ai localizations and uh um and what's going on on the japanese side of things because as i said with that um i think i turned my childhood friend into a girl the publisher and the mangaka had no idea what was happening so we'll get into more details after i cover this stuff here so this is what Caleb said. And this interview is like from a few years ago. At least with manga, no one is an island. I may be the one who produces the raw script for a manga chapter or volume, but that text passes through many hands before the public sees the final product. Yes, like that team of um, editors Viz has with over 200 years of experience. That is their quality control, by the way. Kadanja actually has quality control. A Kadanja rep actually told me, um, I asked them about it and, they said straight the uh, Kadansha Japan told them what they're doing to, you know, make sure um, translations are accurate. So, and if there is a translation that isn't accurate, they, they told me just to let them know and they'll fix it. But yeah, they're working on a um, quality control um, uh, system. But anyways, uh, let's see. The down, um, let's see. I most of the time I have little to no involvement after submitting my part and I could be caught off guard by changes made by editorial, which I'm not suggesting are bad things. Mm -hmm. The downside is that implicit rule of uh, etiquette state that when there's a decision that fans don't like, I can't just come out publicly and say, whoa, back off. That wasn't me. Um, it was uh, editor jerk face to redirect the uh, angry mob. I'm going to read this part and then I'll, I'll give my two cents here. Most of the time I'd want to defend an editor's decision anyway, but even when I happen to disagree, it's unprofessional to throw a creative partner under the bus. But naturally the person with their name on the work is most exposed to black uh, to backlash, even when it's a multi-pronged creative process behind the scenes. Here's the thing. Now, I understand Kayla being professional, not throwing his editor under the bus, but where the fuck is your editor protected? Why isn't he coming out and protecting you, Caleb? That's where I have an issue. It's fucked up that this is happening. I, I don't condone death threats. I don't condone harassment. You know, constructive criticism and, you know, actually having a discussion. That's a completely different story. But your editor not stepping in and defending you and protecting you is really fucked up. My editor at Bounding Into Comics, he will protect me. Like if someone's attacking me for my work, he will come in and defend me, hands down. You don't have that. I don't have that issue. In short, the freelance translator has far less control for, uh, than the average fan seems to imagine. It does depend. It does. There's, there's certain ones like Katrina, I am looking at you specifically. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. To that point, I think I failed to figure out how to thread the perilous needle of fan engagement. Too much exposure, even through mostly uh, positive engagement, eventually puts a target on one's back. I'd like to think that given um, the absence of diehard uh, manga slash anime fans, the world of literary translation might be, uh, might be different. But the gross, uh, largely sexist, mm-hmm, Backlash against Emily Wilson um, following uh, her uh, new translation of the Odyssey, for instance, doesn't inspire much confidence. I will say this, though. Um, certain sects of the manga fandom are very, very toxic. I don't, uh, God, ever since like Boku no Hero Academia went mainstream, for example, it got very, very toxic. Same with Chainsaw Man um, and uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba and Jujutsu Kaisen. There are certain sects in the, and eh, to an extent, One Piece, yeah, I'll, One Piece, it's limited to Twitter. You do not see this on One Piece Reddit. But those fans are very, very toxic. And we've seen fans, um, quote unquote fans, uh, attack Kubo. We've seen them attack um, Horikoshi. It's it's disgusting. With Horikoshi, it was over ships, too. <laughs> Fucking hideous. We've seen the death threats to Oda over Yamato. It's it's wild. I was on the front lines for that too. For those of you that follow me on Twitter, you guys definitely know that. But let's get to this right here, this final part here. 
Um, the obvious point that uh, so many um, seem to miss is that these are commercial products designed to make money. Publishers wouldn't last long otherwise. Yeah, you know what the problem is? Is your publisher is not marketing. This doesn't market for shit. Neither, and granted, Kadansha doesn't either. I don't know why Western publishers just don't market their products. It's very, very annoying. Um, let's see. Because if they did that, you wouldn't have this problem. The artistry takes a back seat from the cold calculating business perspective and the localizers balancing act is about all about finding a satisfying compromise that preserves the integrity of the work while meeting commercial standards designed to maximize readership. I said for kids, this is the for kids in a manga. We're seeing it here. Just like there's a for kids in video games right now. There's a for kids in manga. Now, again, not all manga publishers do this. I would say it's more rampant in the video game industry than the manga and the anime industry. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, let's see, which can seem arbitrary at times and yes, uh, often frustrate me. Um, it's making the best of a non-ideal, of non-ideal sets of uh, competing priorities. Easy example, in a complete vacuum with no uh, external considerations behind the creative, uh, I would absolutely make Bagako use um, naughty language now and then as part as an angry teenager would, which we do see in fan translations, by the way. Um, but in reality, the book's age rating doesn't allow for that. This is true for like other countries as well, um, where they're trying to, you know, at least be able to be passable to get into like countries like Australia or the Middle East or um I think in Europe, it, it has this issue as well. I could be wrong. But yeah, it, I understand what, what he's talking about here. Um, but in the U.S., though, it's, it, this irritates me, especially as someone that worked at GameStop for, for a few years. I, I'll get to it. Why? Um, raising the rating would drive away potential customers, say the parent in Barnes & Noble, or even keep the series from appearing on the app. That's not worth it. That's a load of bullshit. Because series like Dan and Dan, on, which is on the Viz app, is uh, web only. It's available to read on Manga Plus on the app, on both desktop and the app. So that's a load of bullshit. That is a little bullshit. Like certain things I could maybe understand, like say um, Ayakashi Triangle, like series, like really heavy, etchy series. I can maybe understand making them web only, but like, like Dandini? No, your logic is flawed here. And then in terms of like the, you know, parents buying their stuff at Barnes and Noble, um, I worked at GameStop for like three years. And guess what? Parents bought their six and seven-year-olds Call of Duty. They bought them Grand Theft Auto. They don't give a fuck. They just want their child to be happy. They don't care. So you're full of shit when you say that. And also proves the point that there's a four kids in situation happening. Um, and again, uh, let's see. Um, and again, uh, Broadhouse rules are not to me. If I suddenly uh, decided to have Bakugo say fuck, editorial would nix it right before, uh, uh, nix it before it saw the light of day. So yeah, I know people are attacking localizers and Katrina definitely is one of those people that totally deserves it or not say deserve it is fucked up. It's like one of those fuck around, find out kind of things with Katrina because she's the one that brags about it. Jell Apocalypse is the one that brags about it. And speaking of, we'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm going to read this part here. What, what I do, ha um, uh, have a good, uh, degree control over is how to create a uh, craft Bakugo's dialogue in the absence of curse words, AKA the four kids in a Boku no Hero Academia. Any compromising I do happens, um, within those constraints. Now, with that said, let's take a look at what Jello Apocalypse said, because with Lovely Complex's English dub, it really irritates me because Disco Tech and Sound Cadence had statements, but they deleted them. So they had to approve this. And they're still selling the Lovely Complex um, English dub. They are. It's disgusting that they are doing this. And there has been no acknowledgement of, um, of the botched localization. None. And it ain't even their first one either. Uh, but let's let's read this here because this is very very important. Uh, and also, if you haven't read the Lovely Complex manga, go do it. Why Jello Apocalypse hated this manga is beyond me. It is so good. Um, 
of note, most an, um, anime distributors do tend to ask that you don't advertise changes like making things less transphobic, uh, making things less transphobic. This is because um, large swaths of the anime community are racist, sexist, transphobic, etc., and will descend upon um, a company's social media page for weeks for the strangest things. For botching a localization, yes, they deserve it. They deserve to hear that criticism. Death threats, no. No, no, no. Calling them out on their shit? Yes. I've been doing that with this. I've been trying to with Disco Tech. And um, I need, I would like to have more people rally around me for it and make this shit viral. But you, it's just wild. It's wild that this says this. Uh, Disco Tech added a content warning on one of their discs and got flack for that. Well, no shit. Their target audience is anime fans. Why would you put that there? Uh, so they're understandably a little skittish now. Well, they should be skittish now because of what they fucking allowed you to do with Lovely Complex. Um, uh, and fun, uh, Funimation and Crunchyroll, well, now debunked Funimation. Um, and Crunchyroll works like this, too. Because Funimation went under um, it officially and was fully merged with Crunchyroll on April 2nd. But, yeah, some of their teams, I don't know how much of their team is working for Crunchyroll in terms of localizers. I know that according to Perini, the COO of Crunchyroll, he said that they have an in-house localization team. So I don't know if it's just a couple, a few of the Funimation ones or it's all like, or none of them and it's just Crunchyroll. I don't know. But anyways, um, let's see. Most anime, anime distributors don't care if you make um, things nicer, more gay, or more gay, or add representation. They just ask that you don't flaunt the changes or use buzzwords. Yeah, Katrina. Why do you do that? I do not know. You're a dumbass for doing that. Um, you're generally not allowed to say hot button words like sexism or patriarchy anymore in most funny dubs unless it's already in the subtitles. Yes, then usually that's because of a localizer botching the subtitles most of the time, um, because those are words uh, that brain dead weebs get mad about and share about on their various image boards. Botching a localization and making your um, uh, localizer fan fiction deserves to get blasted. However, you can say things like chauvinist because that isn't on the bu uh, buzzword list. Uh, you just need to use words they aren't pre-programmed to hate. No! You just need to accurately translate the fucking localization. You need to accurately translate the anime. And that's all you need to do. If fan translators can do it, I don't understand why you can't, bro. Well, he's fired now, but you know. Um, you're generally not allowed to say hot button words. Um, oh, I, fuck it. I read that already. Um, let's see. The people who get mad about this don't actually have thoughts about um, these things or know why they hate them. Oh, no. No, you are wrong about that, bro. Um, I will say this, though, to be fair. Uh, let me read this part and then I will say this. They've um, uh, just been told to hate specific words because those are the SJW words. It's very embarrassing, LMAO. I'm going to be fair on this one, okay? I'm going to play devil's advocate. He's right about the mainstream. Um, audience getting into uh this discourse he's right about that because i have seen so much misinformation from them uh from various people um usually they are grifters and they they have grifted off of me before and it annoys the hell out of me but mostly like ancient magus's bride for and lovely complex for example after um like with the ancient magus's bride like after um the first chapter uh, of the localization came out i heard nothing Nothing from these people. Nothing from the people that were. Um, uh, uh, actually, I actually showed pages from the Ancient Magus's Bride uh, AI human hybrid localization, and they couldn't tell the difference between that and Seven Seas. So, um, but in general, like I haven't heard shit about the Ancient Magus's Bride since then. I cover it, and I'm up to date with it. I love the Ancient Magus's Bride manga. I've been covering it since like 2017, I believe. Yeah. 20, yeah, 2017 for Ancient Magus's Bride. I love this. I love the Ancient Magus's Bride. I do. I'm glad we got um, in uh, a simul pub for it. I'm very happy with that. I'm happy, minus like a couple of words being way too small and almost unreadable, which I, I do have to let them know about that. Um, uh, it, it's fine. There's no problems with it. Same with Lovely Complex. After like a clip showing our uh, debunking, um, uh, Jello Apocalypse, 
which was the end of the anime, uh, people forgot about it. Me, no. I watched the whole thing and saw it. As soon as I saw more people were saying, uh, they were showing me um, some some changes and uh, I saw that Jello Apocalypse was on the fucking Blu-ray's commentary. That was when I was like, yeah, I gotta look at all 24 episodes and see what's going on. And I did. And I sprayed my wrist in the process doing it. But it, it was totally worth it. It was. But now, let me get to um, the final thing here. and let, We're going to be doing some debunking. Oh, hold on. Wrong thing. Um, here we go. We're going to be doing some debunking here. And one of them, is, speaking of Ancient Magus' Bride, is let's talk about the translations. Um, I see a lot of people say is that AI is taking over and replacing localizers. It's not. It's not doing that. As much as you want it to, it's not. And if you wanted a straight up AI localization, I've covered them and they are horrible. You need to have it's you need to have a human like edit it. Otherwise, it's just it's gonna be like a hot mess. It it really is. Even though frankly, it's probably better uh than a good some of the botch localizations I've seen, but still you need to have human hands on it. Now, in terms of uh manga, okay, um, let's break that down. So with, um, I would say the ones that are the worst offenders for botching localizations are Viz, Seven Cs, and two, Square Enix is very hit or miss. Um, but uh, Kadansha, uh, Yen Press, and Comic Key, in terms of manga, you don't have that many issues with them. No, 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 no. Um, Magamo doesn't have any issues either. With Kamiki and Magamo, it is because of uh, um, their in-house team and they are actually fans. Now, in regards to AI hybrid localization, you do have it. It was happening before the Ancient Magus' Bride. It was happening for, um, uh, it's still happening for some of uh, Shueisha's um, Manga Plus exclusives. You so, it, It's not very often, but you do see it. it you do. And for the most part, they're pretty accurate. I There's a couple, sometimes where there might be a typo or something, but for the most part, they aren't botched at all. Um, now, in regards to anime, oh, before I forget, let me um, say this too. In terms of, um, outside of like, obviously, Shueisha's Manga Plus exclusives and the Ancient Magus' Bride, you're not gonna have, like, with the troubled um, uh, localizations, uh, from like Viz, um, Seven Seas, and uh, um, and Square Enix, they're not get, they're not moving. As much as I would like to see it, they I'd like to see them be held accountable. They ain't going anywhere because Seven Seas has a union. They unionized. They're not going anywhere. As much as I would like them to, they are not going anywhere. Uh, Viz, Viz is just a huge hot mess because you have their quality control system being their team of editors with over 200 years experience, which doesn't do shit, frankly. They botched the localizations. So they're not going anywhere. Now, in terms of anime, the only localizations I've seen problems with are um, are obviously Viz. Um, there's, uh, I'd say, yeah, Crunchyroll's in-house localizers and, and Sentai Filmworks. Sentai Filmworks is what the people that hire Katrina. Atlas West does too, by the way. But it's like, why? Why? The only good thing I would say is in regards to Sentai Filmwork situation, oh God, and it's botched beyond hell. Like we've seen like uh, mansplaining and um, some God with a uh, problematic age gap. We've seen, we've seen that. It is bad. But the thing is, though, is that High Dive will actually listen to uh, the fans and we'll, fi we'll, we'll fix it. Crunchyroll, you don't get any of that. Um, in terms of anime localization, if you want a good English localization um, and you are willing to use a VPN, um, you go on Muse Asia, which is free on YouTube, or, um, or Netflix Asia, whether it be Japan or otherwise, and, um, and Prime Video Asia as well. Those are, and um, I would say Disney Plus too, as well. 
Disney Plus's uh, um, localizations have been very, very accurate. Hell, I'm going to say this. I haven't seen any complaints outside of the one Viz did for Bleach. I've not seen any complaints about um, the localizations on uh, Disney Plus. Speaking of, people are saying that anime that uh, Disney gets is in streaming jail. No, 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 no. That was summertime rendering, and that's it. The rest of them are on Hulu. People need to shut the fuck up about that because that really, really grinds my gears. Now, I saw a tweet about like a legal aspect of this and I have to mention this. Um, and I kind of did with, um, I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl, is that once it leaves the publisher or the studio, they have no idea what happens with that localization unless fans tell them. Um, I One of my, uh, my Antiplex Insider told me this, that... Um, that there was a, a, I think it was, he, I don't remember if it was the producer of Zone 100 or it was, it was one of the Antiplex producers, I believe, not the one for Zone 100, but they were telling them about, you know, the Bosch localization situation. And they're like, they had no clue what was happening. None. That's why I'm like, yeah, um, it's the same thing with manga. As I said with that, um, I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl. They had no, the manga con, and the publisher had no clue that was happening. And they didn't know until fans spoke up. And ooh, we spoke up. And once they found out what was happening, they changed it. They fixed it. They had them redo it. Because man, the manga was pissed. They were mad about it. Um. I know in terms of manga, like if we want to get when fuck, I need to get a change from Shueisha. I, I don't know if this would be breach of contract or not um it could be because Shueisha, what they do they do have the viz simul pubs on manga plus and not their own simul pubs for like the majority of uh titles that are available um on viz uh viz is shown in jumps um jump app they need to i swear Shueisha needs to do something about it because it's supposed to be the japanese uh japanese editorial team at Shueisha, you know catching this stuff and then, and it really irritates me to no end. I've tweeted the, um, I think I've tweeted the, yeah, I tweeted the editor and um, the, uh, I, yeah, I tweeted both editors that run it, that run um, Manga Plus and still waiting, man. I'm still waiting because they want to stop piracy. That's how you stop piracy. Same with video games, same with, uh, um, with anime. You want to stop piracy, just give an accurate localization now i know people were giving me shit about nintendo because i asked when i saw the localization um uh or the localizer uh job posting i asked i said does nintendo japan know about it because as i said anime studios and the manga publishers they don't know video games i would imagine it's the same thing i really i that's what i hope it is i hope it's the same thing um nintendo i feel like it might be but in the case of like, say, Square, Square Enix has already been corrupted. It's really, really bad because they have their cultural team there. I, or I think they still have it there. Until Square, because people have been asking, what's the solution to this? Well, in terms of um, terms of manga, you just got to let the, um, say it politely, mind you, but you got to make sure you have your evidence. Um, like I did for, uh, I think I turned my childhood friend into a girl. You have your evidence and you send it to the publisher and to the, um, uh, to the mangaka. Be like, this is what's happening. Um, can you find a way to look into this? That's what you need to do. In terms of anime, um, anime is a little bit harder to figure out because, um, I feel like if you go to the producers and whatnot, then, um, or not the producers, I'm sorry. If you went to like the script writer or the director, I think something could be done, but I'm not sure. I'm still working on trying to get anime, um, local, some anime localizations fixed. I mean, look at Lovely Complex. I'm still trying to get Discotech to admit that fuckery. Now, in terms of video game localization, I have... You got to vote with your wallet, man, on, on that. And also something that I really strongly recommend doing, especially with uh, um, how, uh, um, uh, with the value of yen going down compared to the dollar, just start importing. 
Just start importing everything from Japan, whether it be the Blu-rays or the, um, or hell, um, in case of the of, uh, anime, um, if you have to import from like a different Asian country to get, make sure you get like the views communication localization, do it, man. It, that localization is accurate. Usually their localizations are accurate. So that's what I would do in regards to anime. Now in regards to video games, I, as I said, I feel like you got to import them from Japan and, and maybe even have fan translators go in and do something. Um, but I feel like you also got, you got to let the directors know what's happening. You do, you got to let, like, for example, Yoko Taro, tell Yoko Taro what's happening. He'll probably fix it. Suda51, uh, he's up, he's up on Twitter. He loves talking to the fans. Just let him know what's happening. No, there's a bad localization and they'll probably uh, take a look into it. Um, that's the only thing I could tell you would be the easiest thing to do. Now, in terms of Shueisha, on the other hand, um, one of my uh, friends who's a mangaka for, um, for Shueisha, uh, said that what Shueisha wants, if you is to have handwritten letters sent to them um, in Japanese. If you do that, you might get something from Shueisha. I had the manga put a request in for me for for certain things. But that's all I could tell you in terms of uh, localizations. I, I re it's really really um, fucked up. But at the same time, what needs to happen is the Japanese. I'd like to see the Japanese publishers. And the uh, um, studio step in. I'd love to see it. On the video game side, I'm not sure if that's possible because of how bad it is right now. But for anime, it's definitely possible. And same with ma manga, it's definitely possible. I, I mean, I've been part of a couple that have done it. Anime, like with, as I said, with high dive, high dive listens and they'll take care of it. Like a crunchy roll, you can't do shit about it. It's very, very frustrating. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you guys think about this. I hope this does, um, this video does clear up everything because people in regards to Capcom, they're only covering the, um, the initial tweet. They're not looking at the bigger picture. They're not looking at like what the, their editors are doing. They're not looking at what, um, you know, their localization process. They're not, they're just focusing on that one tweet. Me, it's different obviously, because I'm covering the whole thing. <laughs> but hopefully this, if this video gets enough views, I might do more video, do, cover more of my tweets uh, that I've put out. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. I hope I broke this down really well, per uh, perfectly. Or I don't know if it would be perfect. I probably could have done it better. But let me know what you guys think about this situation. Um, does what do you think in terms, again, I'm going to stress this right now. AI is not replacing anything. Straight up AI, no, 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 no. Even um, a mangaka that I talked to, Darameon, um, the mangaka of Kengen Omega and Kengen Asura, he straight up said, no, AI is not replacing localizers. It is not happening. Human hybrid? Yes. You could, I, for certain publishers, I could see more human hybrid happening. Um, but in general, no. No, you could say it. You could tell me like other YouTubers say it, but no, they don't know shit. I talk to people in the industry. So that's how I know in regards to anime and in regards to manga. I know these things because I talk to people. I ask questions to uh, members of the uh, industry and I get my answers. So, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigan Sync. Love what we're doing. I want to help keep this operation alive and kicking so we can keep bringing you more uh, content. Uh, a few ways you could do that. Donate to our Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, purchase something off our Amazon wish list. All that's in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow us on um, uh, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and friend us on PlayStation Network. That's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later.